We're live. Sergeant, start the backups. PC started. Thank you. Cloud recording is rolling. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Okay, hello and good afternoon and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I ask that everybody please turn off all electronic devices. Please turn them to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. <clears throat> Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of January 28th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Empry Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Blessed and present. Thank you. Morelli. Present. Rannan. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Present. Deutsch. Yeah. Dharma Diaz. Presente. Ruben Diaz. Presente. Drum. Present. Eugene. <clears throat> Gibson. Blessed afternoon, everyone. I'm here. Thank you. Jonar. Jonar. Present. Gordenchik. Here, thank you. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Who? Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Present. Thank you. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Here. Mm -hmm. Reynoso. Present. <clears throat> Present. Thank you. Riley. Good afternoon, everyone. Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. There we go. Presente. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Alone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. <clears throat> Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. 
Thank you so much, Mike McSweeney. We will now go into today's invocation, which will be delivered by Dan Rodriguez, Reverend Senior Pastor at Greater Allen AME Cathedral, located at 110-31 Floyd H. Flake Boulevard in Jamaica, Queens. Thank you so much, Reverend Dan Rodriguez, for being with us here today. It's such an honor to have you here at this particular time. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let me just um, correct that. I am an associate pastor. Uh, the senior pastors are Reverend Doctors Floyd and Elaine Flake. And uh, good afternoon, esteemed council persons, battle majority leader, speaker, staff, security, and friends. You all look great. Impressive, strong body. This invocation today is an honor, and I bring you greetings from again my pastors, Floyd and Elaine Flake. Let us pray. Most merciful and gracious and holy God, your apostle Matthew declared in your word where two or three are gathered in his name, there am I among them. Dear Lord, we pray that you would help our leaders in this new season and help them to govern wisely. Help them to rest in your power and purpose for their lives. Bring them emotional stability, mental clarity, physical endurance to do their work. Heavenly Father, give our leaders grace to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before you in all integrity. May they defend the oppressed, protect the virtuous, and discipline the wrongdoers. Please give them the wisdom to enact laws and regulations that will foster an environment where every citizen can flourish spiritually, socially, and physically. We pray that all affected in any way by the COVID virus find comfort and relief from loss, financial hardship, housing, an educational crisis. Empower this body of people appointed leaders today, God, to discern, expose, and resolve equitable paths of solution for your people. God told David in the Bible, the ones who rule righteously, who rule in the fear of God, are like the lights in the morning sunshine. And we thank you, precious God, for choosing these council leaders to serve at such a time as this. Bless them and every family represented. May they go forth through their supportive staff, forever mindful of every person to be impacted by their decisions, raising the level of this beloved community with joy, fulfillment, good health, and success. Dear mighty God, it is in your strong and powerful name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Thank you. I officially feel prayed over today. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reverend Rodriguez. I'd now like to ask Council Member Donique Miller to have the honor of spreading the invocation onto the record. Council Member Miller. Absolutely, Majority Leader, and I, I will tell you, Reverend Dan and, and uh, um, uh, Council Member and Adams and I were kind of duking it out over who was going to, although my office is up the, around the corner from Allen, uh, uh, Council Member Adams has been a longtime member of the Greater Allen Cathedral, so uh, we share this invocation spreading. Um, so uh, the Reverend uh, Dan Rodriguez is associate pastor at the Greater Allen Cathedral of New York. The Greater Allen Cathedral is a pillar of District 27, Southeast Queens and beyond. Greater Allen Cathedral has a congregation of over 23,000, making it one of the largest churches in the United States. It has a private school uh, that serves many. Uh, it is one of the largest employers in, in, in all of Queens. Uh, his portfolio includes his portfolio includes commercial residential development and his various uh, commercial and social enterprises. The Greater Allen Cathedral's church has a large church ministry in New York um, that provides uh, food kitchens, feeding uh, the hungry, nearly oh, nearly 105 meals weekly. 
Uh, they also have a, they provide social services, senior services, operate senior uh, centers, provide senior housing, and shelter for domestic violence victims. Reverend Dan Rodriguez, his ministry is dedicated to youth and community. He works on social and environmental issues, justice through counseling, publication, media, and teaching and speaking. That is his foundation, D-Truth Unlimited. For advocacy for youth, Reverend Rodriguez has worked for 25 years in television and broadcast engineering, such uh, places such as CNN, BET, Fox, ION, Food Network, uh, engineer in charge of PBS shows such as Weekend New, New, New Hour, and Fireline and Metro Focus. And we are blessed to have Reverend Rodriguez and his, not just his professional skills, which he and, and uh, shares with us, but his ministerial skills that he shares with our community and particularly our young folks here in the 27th. And it's such a blessing to have him. I thank you for all of your work. Look forward to continuing to work with you. And with that, I spread the uh, motion to spread the invocation upon the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Reverend. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Miller. And we are so pleased to have you here today, Reverend Rodriguez. Um, that was a powerful and timely prayer. And we thank you so much for your presence here today. At this time, we will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Kevin Riley. Thank you, Majority Leader. Good afternoon, colleagues. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of December 17th, 2020 and charter meeting of January 6, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you, newly elected and on the scene, adopting minutes and everything. So we are happy to once again have you here with us. We will now go to messages and papers from the mayor. M276 through M282, various budget documents. Finance. M283, Preliminary Mayor's Management Report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M284, City Debt and Reserves. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from City, County, and Borough Offices. M285, Public Advocate Submitting C. Weaver for Appointment to the City Planning Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Happy Thursday to everyone. Uh, welcome to our stated meeting today. I hope that you and your families are safe and well as we close out the month of January. We do so with a new administration in Washington and new hope that swift action will be taken in the battle against the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. We are already seeing evidence of that, but New Yorkers desperately need more vaccines. And I wanna urge the federal government to continue to make this a priority. Lives are depending on it. As of yesterday, 26,763 New Yorkers have succumbed to this horrific virus. I also wanna acknowledge, as I always do, a few deaths as a result of 9-11 related illnesses since we last met. We recently lost Lieutenant Gerard Roddy McGibbon of the FDNY and firefighter Ron Stores of the FDNY. Additionally, Jasim Mia, one of our city's construction workers died due to a residential wall collapse in Brooklyn on December 28th. We also lost George McDonald, the founder of the Doe Fund. George began the Doe Fund to empower and uplift New Yorkers with histories of homelessness, substance use, and incarceration. He committed his life to bettering New York, and our city will forever be grateful for his work. I wanna take a moment of silence to remember all the lives that we've lost as a result of the coronavirus, as well as Lieutenant McGibbon, Firefighter Stores, Jasim Mia, and George McDonald. We are keeping their families in our thoughts and prayers.
Thank you. Yesterday marked International Holocaust Remembrance Day, the liberation of Auschwitz, where we commemorated the millions of lives that were tragically lost during the Holocaust. Sadly, we know that hate against Jewish people is still alive across the world, across our country, and even in New York City. And Holocaust Remembrance Day is an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to fighting hate and to countering anti-Semitism at every turn. Last year, the council voted on a resolution to commemorate International Holocaust Remembrance Day throughout the city and to promote Holocaust education. As a council, we remain united with the Jewish people and we continue to mourn the memories of those lost. We honor those who have survived the Holocaust by saying, never forget, never again. Finally, I want to acknowledge the resignation of Michael Reagan, who is stepping down as a city council appointee to the New York City Board of Correction, the city's independent oversight agency for the jails in New York City. Michael served in this role for 19 years, from December of 2001 until earlier this month when he stepped down. He served as vice chair of the board from 2006 to 2012, and during Michael's tenure, the board played a significant role in monitoring and drawing attention to major issues in city jails, such as solitary confinement, mental health treatment, and suicide. Michael is also a former city council staffer, having served as the director of communications for the council. And we are grateful for his long service to the Board of Correction and to the city of New York. Thank you, Michael. And now on to our agenda. Uh, the Land Use Committee will be voting on the following item, 4002 Fort Hamilton Parkway, the site selection of a new 475 seat public intermediary school in Councilmember Brad Landers district. Moving on to our legislative agenda, we'll be voting on introduction number 2204A, sponsored by Councilmember Dharma Diaz, which will extend the deadline for the submission of construction documents related to the city's basement legalization pilot program. Local law 49 of 2019 established the city's basement legalization pilot program and required applicants to submit necessary construction documents to the Department of Buildings by January 2nd, 2021. The pandemic has made compliance with the deadline difficult and affected DOB's ability to review applications and conduct necessary in-person inspections. To provide additional time, the bill would extend the deadline for six months. And I wanna thank from the staff, Austin Branford for his, for, this, for his work on this. And I wanna congratulate Councilmember Diaz on her first bill that is passing as a member of the council. We'll also be voting on two civil service bills sponsored by our civil service and labor chair, council member Danique Miller. Introduction 2161A, will create a nine member board for the purpose of reviewing and issuing recommendations on workplace safety uh, and health guidance that would be issued during public health emergencies, including the current COVID-19 pandemic. The board, will, the board would hold two public hearings to solicit testimony and workplace guidance from relevant employees and stakeholders. It is then required to review the content of any such guidance that agencies have issued to municipal officers and employees and that private employers have issued to private employers during the pandemic. Recommendations would be made based on their assessment of testimony and submitted guidance and a preliminary report issued within one month of the first hearing. And a final report with updated assessments and recommendations would be issued by December 15th, 2021. Introduction number 2162A requires the Citywide Office of Occupational Safety and Health to monitor federal, state, and local occupational safety and health agencies for any guidance they might issue on matters related to workplace safety and public health. Within 24 hours of any new guidance being issued, COSH would be required to deliver the guidance electronically to each agency safety and health coordinator the newly issued guidance is required to be posted in the workplace and employees must receive training or education needed to ensure compliance. I wanna thank from the staff, Nusat Chowdhury 
for their work on this bill. And I wanna congratulate and thank you, uh, Chair Miller, for your really hard work on these two bills. So thank you for making this happen today. Moving on, we'll be voting on two bills related to the city's 3-on-1 system. Introduction number 1420C, proposed by Council Minority Leader Steve Matteo, will require the administration to investigate the extent to which 3-on-1 has been used as a tool for potential harassment. Specifically, the bill would require a study on the frequency of anonymous complaints made to 3 on one since 2016 and whether such complaints were more, unlike, were more likely to be unsubstantiated than other complaints. The administration will be required to submit a report discussing the findings of the study by December 1st, 2021, and that report will include recommendations. Introduction number 1832B, sponsored by Council Member Fernando Cabrera, the chair of the committee that voted out these bills, would require through and one to notify an agency whenever a service request has not been closed within the number of days specified in the AG agency's service level agreement. When a customer makes a complaint to through and one, the call often results in a service request for a city agency. Service level agreements are commitments that agencies make to respond to a particular type of service request within a certain time frame. This bill would ensure that agencies honor such commitments. And from the staff, I want to thank CJ Murray, Elizabeth Cronk, Emily Forgione, and Jayaspri Ganapafi for their work on these two bills. And I want to thank uh, Chair Cabrera for this. Early voting has begun uh, in a special election in Queens for Council District 24, and the first election uh, in our city to use ranked choice voting. While voter education efforts regarding ranked choice voting are underway, it is important that we ramp up these efforts in advance of the June primaries when ranked choice voting will be used on a citywide basis for the first time. Today, the council will be voting on a bill related to ranked choice voting education. Introduction number 1994A, proposed by council member Alika Ampri Samuel, will require the New York City Campaign Finance Board to take a number of concrete steps to familiarize voters with ranked choice voting. In particular, the bill would require the CFB to conduct a comprehensive media campaign, distribute a citywide mailer, publish educational materials on its website, and conduct outreach in collaboration with community-based organizations in all five boroughs. In addition, the bill would require 26 city agencies to post and distribute educational materials provided by the CFB. The bill would also mandate the Civic Engagement Commission include ranked choice voting education as part of its poll site interpreter training. And from the staff, I wanna thank CJ Murray, Elizabeth Cronk and Emily Forgione. And I wanna congratulate Councilmember Amprey Samuel who has been working on this for a long time. Our next bill comes out of the Finance Committee and makes significant reforms to the city's current tax lien sales system. I really, really want to thank Councilmember Adrian Adams for her tireless, tireless work on this legislation. She is a fierce advocate for homeowners throughout our city and knows the devastation that the COVID pandemic has posed for them. Adrian has been working on this for months, literally, uh, and was deputized to negotiate the, with the administration on this. And she was talking to members, the mayor's office, the Department of Finance, advocates, homeowners, community boards, and introduction 2166B proposed by Councilmember Adams would extend the city's authority to sell tax liens for just one year. During that year, the council, the administration, and advocates will form a task force to examine the city's collection of municipal debt so that it could be done in a more fair, effective, and efficient way, as well as considering alternatives to the tax lien sale that would, that would include transferring tax delinquent properties or liens to mission-driven not-for-profit organizations, such as community land trusts. The bill also has provisions to protect eligible homeowners who are facing financial hardship due to COVID-19 from any tax lien sale that may be held this year in 2021. It also makes it harder for homeowners to be eligible for the tax lien sale in the first place by raising the delinquency eligibility threshold by thousands of dollars. And the bill expands eligibility 
for the Department of Finance's Low Income Payment Plan and Tax Deferral Program, as well as establishes a lower property tax late payment interest rate for mid-sized properties. The bill would mandate more robust outreach to be done by the administration, but in addition to this, pursuant to an agreement between the council and the administration, a million dollars in discretionary funding will be allocated across fiscal year 2021 and fiscal year 2022 to be designated to community-based organizations doing lean sale outreach. And from the finance division staff, I wanna thank Rebecca Chasen, Emre Adev, Ray Majeski, Andrew Wilbur, Nashia Roman, Stephanie Ruiz, and Latanya McKinney for their work in making this a reality. For generations, street vending has been a pathway to financial stability for so many immigrant New Yorkers. But bad policies, bureaucracy, and inaction on the part of city government has undermined this career path. Today, the council will take a bold step forward and vote to address current problems throughout the city's street vendor system. This is an opportunity to turn a new page for our vendors who have waited for far too long for a fair system. Introduction 1116B, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, would mandate significant reforms related to street vendor permitting throughout New York City. First, the legislation will expand the availability of food vendor permits by gradually releasing new permits over the course of 10 years. For these new permits, a permittee would be required to be present and working at their cart. Eventually, all permits will require this. This will help our efforts to end the underground economy that has sprung up around this industry and stop bad actors from illegally releasing their permit for tens of thousands of dollars, preying upon people who have been unable to obtain a permit. Second, this legislation would create a dedicated unit to enforce street vending laws with a focus on locations where street vending is plentiful and congestion issues persist. Thirdly, the bill establishes a street vendor advisory board, including relevant city agencies and representatives of brick and mortar businesses, as well as the small business community and street vendors themselves. The bill will also make two additional changes. It will require both food and general merchandise vendors to maintain 20 feet from stoop line stands and sidewalk cafes. It will also expand the city's green cart program to increase options for selling healthy food throughout the city. I really, really want to thank Councilmember Chin for her uh, relentless, tireless, tireless leadership uh, on this. She has done a great job. I also want to thank Councilmember Carl Smanchaka, the chair of our immigration committee, being a prime sponsor on this, working with Councilmember Chin and helping get it over the finish line. Uh, thank you to Councilmembers Chin and Menchaca. So many hours went into making this a reality. And I want to thank from the staff, Rachel Cordero and David Seitzer. With that, I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you so much for your leadership. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak at this time? Council members Chin and Adams. All right, we'll begin with council member Margaret Chin. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I am just so excited that we finally got to this point uh, with the vendor bill. And I wanna thank you, Speaker, for your leadership and your support on this bill. This legislation will bring hope and opportunity to hardworking New Yorkers who are immigrants, who have been historically left out of a lot of the government support. You know, during this pandemic, the council, you know, we did work very hard to support our small businesses, but the vendors were left out. They are part of our smallest small businesses. So this bill will at least give them the hope and opportunity. For many of them, they've been taken advantage of 
you know, paying tens of thousand dollars, as our speaker said, just to rent a permit. But this bill will give them the opportunity to have their own permit. And hopefully one day they will be able to operate their own store. But there's so many people to thank. Our former speaker, Melissa Mark Riverito, who introduces legislation in her term. Uh, and I wanted to thank, you know, all the advocate, the street vendor project, and all the, the staff that have worked on this bill. I know the speaker mentioned Rachel Codero, Dave Sicer, Kelly Taylor, Jeff Baker, and former staff, staff who have left the council who have worked on this for so many years. Rob Newman um, and Belki Maharki, who's having her second child, but she worked tirelessly during her pregnancy um, on this bill. And my legislative team, Connor Irving, Angela Seeger, uh, and my chief of staff, Gigi Lee. And I wanna thank all the sponsor. I know you were under a lot of pressure from those uh, lobbyists and the, <laughs> the bids and the Chamber of Commerce, but you stood strong. And so we're gonna get it over the finish line. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Chin. We will now hear from Council Member Adams. Time starts now. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Today, we will vote on intro 216636B, for which I am proud to provide remarks. This legislation is an important step forward on how we handle the collection of unpaid property taxes, sewer, and water bills in our city. We have moved unpaid property taxes, water, and sewer debt collection to a much more equitable place. We have reduced the length of reauthorization to just one year, and we've been added $1 million in outreach for our much needed community-based organizations beginning in fiscal year 21, continuing through fiscal year 22. We've secured substantial wins since our first iteration of this bill last month. And we've created a robust framework to enhance this important reform. These major steps that will protect vulnerable low-income households in the 2021 lien sale and pave the way for substantial rethinking and replacement of the lien sale in the future. I thank the teacher for his indulgence to make sure that we got this legislation right for the most targeted to lose their home. Communities like mine in Southeast Queens and in Brooklyn. I also want to acknowledge the hard work of all of the advocates that helped us get to this point and to Attorney General Tish James for her insight. I thank our great finance team, Rebecca Chasen, Ray Majewski, and Maria Devon, of course, the amazing Latanya McKinney for their long nights, hard work and dedication. Thanks to our partners on the admin side of the house and my Director of Legislative Affairs, Stacey Yearwood. We have come such a long, long, long way with this. And I ask my colleagues for your, your support of this very important reformative legislation. Time. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Adams. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, there are. Council Members Miller, Amprey Samuel, and Menchaca. Okay, we'll begin with Council Member Miller. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon to my colleagues. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic was caused by a new type of coronavirus, which spread in late 2019. Because it was unprecedented virus with a rapid, rapid rate of transmission guidance on how to prevent this viral spread changed rapidly. As we learn more about this new disease, the World Health Organization if issued guidelines, sometimes different from the CDC and sometimes different from the health department in OSHA. Sometimes too much and oftentimes not enough. Essential workers, our hospital workers, delivery workers, and our New York City municipal workforce uh, were given, not given proper information oftentimes. Oftentimes, in fact, that's tell me now when I vote. We were told, I, I was told by, by the city that when this when these guidelines were given that we they had too many uh, agencies to manage 
and could not, did not have the capacity to in real time disseminate information to keep our workforce safe. And so the speaker gave us the technical aspects of the bill. I'm gonna tell you the whys, and that is it. That oftentimes when our, our workforce did not get PPEs and it was this council that advocated on behalf of our municipal workforce, EMS, transit, and, and so many others that, that make our lives seamless, they weren't given the proper instruction. This wasn't um, posted, notified, and, and they weren't properly trained in how to utilize these PPEs. We, so we sought out to, to, to rectify this and we wanted to do it in time to, to address the second wave. And, and, and clearly we, we are there now. So this is timely. I wanna thank the speaker, uh, Jason Golden and, and his team for doing so. Um, but I, I just also wanna mention that the timeliness of um, this is so impactful. Last, uh, so thank you. Uh, I asked my colleagues to support 2161, 2162. This is important. It will support our municipal workforce that um, makes our lives so seamless and protects our city. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Miller. We'll now hear from Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Yeah, New Yorkers went to the ballot in November of 2019 and voted to implement ranked choice voting in the city of New York. So it's the law. And in February of 2020, I stood in front of the Board of Elections to discuss the need for voter education funding related to ranked choice voting. And there are concerns about whether the Board of Elections can even carry out the functionality of ranked choice voting. But intro 1994 is not about the functionality of the system or the mechanics. This bill is directly related to the duties of the Campaign Finance Board having a community education plan and holding government responsible for what is in their scope of duty. This bill codifies work being done and holds the city overall responsible for education and outreach to voters, ensuring that we are in compliance with basic voter rights, voting rights. I wanna highlight just four components of the bill. The first point requires the CFB to conduct a citywide media campaign to familiarize voters with ranked choice voting. And the campaign shall include ads published in community and ethnic media outlets. Again, publication should be included in advertisements in ethnic media, which is the key to reaching all New Yorkers. The second point I wanna talk about is, is the requirement to distribute a postcard explaining ranked choice voting to each household in New York City in which there is at least one registered voter. A postcard is simple and clear and will not get lost in the usual CFB voter guide. The third point I wanna state is that the CFB shall produce educational materials in large print editions made available to the Department for the Aging and for those visually impaired. The last point I wanna stress requires that the CFB collaborate with community-based groups in all five boroughs, such as civil rights organizations. And can, I, can you just give me one more minute because I see my yes, time please. has run out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, or to make sure that we reach out to community-based organizations that have a direct uh, focus on civil rights organizations, disability rights, organizing around public housing residents, that thus our NYCHA residents, and organizations that serve categories of residents that are underrepresented among those who vote, and organizations serving voters who are limited in English proficiency, including voters whose primary speaking language, who speak languages other than English. So in order for us to make this work, we must collaborate with CBOs who are on the ground in direct contact with voters, especially now during a pandemic. It takes a village. So as usual, I'm all about common sense legislation and making sure we are reaching out to people, to the people, in particular communities who have been historically ignored, neglected, and where we have seen the most disparities and disenfranchisement. This will allow for intentional focus on the RCV process and ensure that we get it right in New York City and have successful elections moving forward. So I just want to thank everybody who played a part and finally Time. see this. I thank my colleagues in the BLAC, the co-sponsors on this bill, Common Call, Susan Lerner, Rank the Vote NYC, along with the Brooklyn NAACP, and of course, CJ Murray for your help in this piece of legislation. Thank you all. Thank you, Councilmember Lee Gamprey Samuel. And we'll now go to Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader, and hello to my colleagues. I come with incredible gratitude today 
the street vendor bill is something that will be incredibly transformative to a community that has been building power and voice in our city. A community that has been the legacy of our incredible city, past, present, and the future. A special thanks to Councilmember Margaret Chin and uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. You know, without the speaker coming in and ensuring that this had a path to victory, we would not be here today. Without his courage to stand up and be with our communities that have been suffering, we would not be here today voting. And so a special thank you to the speaker and his entire team for ensuring that we had this moment. Uh, Melissa Mark Viverito, a previous speaker, also was a massive champion. Uh, and I stand with uh, Councilmember Chin on thanking her for ensuring um, that we had a beautiful team to push this forward and all the advocates on the ground, even those who had concerns about the bill. It's been almost half a century since the council has done anything positive for street vendors. This is the kind of relief with an enforcement system that will bring that. I wanna recommit uh, ourselves as a council to ensure that we keep doing these um, uh, legislative fixes and budgetary opportunities for those impacted by COVID. Uh, they are the communities that we must focus on because whether it's a uh, Fifth Avenue hot dog stand or a taco truck in Sunset Park, this is a vibrant, vibrant part of our community. Our street vendors are on the front lines of our pandemic and they are feeding our city. They are small business owners, many of whom were left out of state and federal emergency aid. Street vendors also tell a beautiful American dream story of those who started on our streets and then owned their own brick and mortar. Um. That's the kind of power that we are now enforcing in this bill. And I'm just so excited that we're here today uh, with just so much gratitude to this council for uh, standing up and making this happen. I'll say more in my next vote, um, but I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Thank you so much, Council Member Menchaca. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? I see Council Member Dharma Diaz. Correct. I'm that's the last one. Hi, I'm going to be as quick as, as possible. Thank you, Speaker, for allowing me to bring this bill. Um, Adams and Grander, my predecessor, Espinal, as an advocate that worked on this for six years, is really a big deal for me. As a housing advocate since the age of seven, is tremendous. As a young mom that experienced homelessness and lived in, in a basement apartment and had to do with backup for sewage and an undesirable condition, it's also a big deal for me to know that I'm a part of this process with you all of making better opportunities. As someone that spent 13 years working with the homeless population, I have plenty of horror stories. So I, I thank you all for, for supporting the, this pilot program. We're starting with nine and I'm hoping at the end of our process that New York City as a whole can, can benefit from this. Again, thank you. Holding back emotions as, as I'm listening to you all into the bill. I was 19 and a half and I was homeless and dealt with this. So this is just tremendous. And it being my first bill just solidifies my fight is real and, and I'm humbled and, and thank you all for, for supporting it. Um, that is all, thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Diaz. Your passion is certainly felt. Um, we appreciate your voice here and your experiences are exactly why you are in that seat. Um, at this time, I would just like to also present, um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Council Member Alika Amprey Samuel and we spoke at length about uh, 1994A and just wanna share some of my concerns. Um, I also, um, I'm very passionate about this issue. I believe that this bill as it pertains to ranked choice voting is the absolute right bill, but at the exact wrong time. We are only three to four months out uh, from when our election cycle is going to begin again. And we are also in the midst of special elections which are happening right now. And so an education plan such as the one that Council Member Alika Ampre Samuel outlined would have been appropriate um, and appropriately passed in 2019 or even early 2020. We are in the middle of a pandemic. 
Schools have been closed. Restaurants have been closed. Senior centers closed. Nursing homes shut off from their loved ones and family and friends. Houses of worships uh, have been significantly reduced. If not many have all been closed. We have seen many measures taken um, throughout this pandemic for life and death safety precautions. And it's important that we recognize that many of the ways that we have traditionally reached voters, particularly communities of color, particularly seniors, particularly those with language access challenges have been through those exact mediums. And it's important that we recognize that an educational program at this final hour, as we all know, cannot be done effectively, it cannot be done safely. And with the budget issues that this city is facing right now, where we are all scrambling for resources for food pantries, this money, this time, this energy and resources would be better spent in a postponement um, of this particular uh, ranked choice voting rollout. I also wanna add when we did the census, we spent $40 million in preparation for a census rollout. We are only spending what I understand to be $2 million for ranked choice voting. We also know that the language is also uh, disenfranchising so many people. We know that there will only be presented language in five languages and language speakers that speak Russian, Haitian, Creole, Arabic, Yiddish, Polish, and French are not going to have that education so that they can make the best decisions for their communities. And when I think about so many black voters who were critical in this nation's uh, recent election, we know that for so many of those black voters here in New York City, according to the New York Urban League, 40% of black residents do not have either or home or internet access, which would be another form of the ability to educate. And let's think about what the ballot is going to look like. Our voters, think about this, are going to get a ballot with potentially 37 different mayoral candidates, potentially nine controller candidates, four public advocate candidates, as well as the borough president races. I understand that there are over 20 candidates running in some city council races. Our voters are going to have to look at a ballot that they are gonna to have to rank choice vote in addition to district attorneys that will not be ranked choice as well as judges that will not be ranked choice. I can only imagine that a ballot is going to look like a booklet that we have given voters really no education. The software pending around how ranked choice voting is actually going to work is, going to, is still pending. And if any of you have ever had to get your own signatures for uh, to get on the ballot, just to get someone to sign their name and to write and print it often has challenges where you have to speak one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, with your face in their face for people that cannot hear, for people that cannot see, for people that cannot understand you. So we are going to be putting our voters in a very precarious and dangerous situation everyone has to recognize that having a booklet for a ballot, limited English access, little to no education, no ability to really reach many voters that will be disenfranchised, particularly those who do not speak English as their first language, is going to be very detrimental to our uh, governmental education and voting rights acts that people have fought for for years. And I'll just close with saying this, we so often want to compare ourselves to other cities like San Francisco's doing it, this city's doing it. But when you look at San Francisco, their African-American population is now less than 6%. Their black population has dwindled and has rapidly declined over the last three decades. And so when we look at those numbers, do we really want to be like San Francisco? Do we really want to uh, emulate the practices that they are putting forth? These are issues that we really have to think about. And ranked choice voting was set up in order to elect new kinds of voters. But I'm curious as to who those new kinds of voters and voters of color are when we have an attorney general who's African-American, when we have... When we, excuse me, I'm gonna to come to a conclusion right now. 
when we have so many people of color, even in this body, our first uh, African-American everything, it's really challenging to see that this process is going to be put forward in a way that is going to disenfranchise our communities. So I just wanna be on record at this point. It's something that's very passionate to me from an ancestral place. And I'll just close with that. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, there are two other council members who wish to speak on general orders. Again, items that we will be voting on today. Council members Rodriguez and Reynosa. Time starts now. Council member Rodriguez. Yes, thank you. And uh, council member, majority leader, I'm going to speak around the street vendor bill, vendor bill. As everyone know, I've been in the front line working with council member Chain, all the, everyone that, uh, who care for the street vendors and small business. I support uh, the, the bill as something that, you know, for many years we've been working with the street vendor projects. I just want to bring to the attention that enforcement is critical, that it, it, we still have to look on how to uh, stop the level of exploitation of some people that are in the black market. They're using the permits to rent those permits and make a lot of money under the table. So I hope that as part of this process, we will be able to work with the administration to put the necessary resources so that enforcement must happen when it comes to the black market that is operating 24 seven in that industry. Those permits should be only given to those individuals who are who own them. Second, I want to be sure also that as we support our street vendors, we also support our small businesses. The restaurant owners, the supermarkets, the bodega owners, they didn't get the proper support that they needed in this process. And mean process means all the financial resources given because of the COVID-19. I also would like to encourage that when we look at street vendors, we're talking about someone that have one or two tables, not someone that have 15 tables because they rented those space as a bodega or as a supermarket. So let's continue working together. Let's support the street vendors, but also let's support the small business community, the restaurant owner, the supermarket ah. owner. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. And now we will have Is there another member signed up to speak? Council member Reynoso followed by council member Ku. Council member Reynoso and then council member Ku. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just wanted to speak related to the tax lien bill uh, that we will be voting on today. Um, and just want us to be mindful that during a time uh, when many, uh, mostly uh, small homeowners, black and brown small homeowners, um, in many communities are experiencing uh, a financial hardship. Um, the fact that we would move forward with a bill that seeks to put a lien on their property, um, I just think is, uh, is unjustified and, and a real tragedy. I think we should uh, hold out on any uh, tax lien until we're, uh, at least the executive order has been pulled by our governor um, in, in noting that we've gone past the coronavirus again. Uh, we're talking about the potential of giving people rebates, homeowners rebates uh, in this crisis because we know how hard the times have been, but then in a backhanded way, have no problem uh, putting their properties in a lien sale. Uh, it's a Giuliani era legislation and law um, that was not justified then and shouldn't have been justified now. Many large cities uh, collect uh, taxes and back taxes in many different ways. Um, we collect summonses. Uh, if you don't pay your summonses, you, you, got, you get fined. Um, and there's one, they, they figure out a way to collect it. The city of New York always figures out a way to collect their money. A lien sale is completely unnecessary and I think overreaching. So I will actually ask that uh, council members vote no on this bill today. Um, and uh, congratulations uh, for the street vendors bill uh, to council member Chin and others. And uh, Again, encouraging folks to vote no on the lien sale bill. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member Reynoso. Council Member Koo. Time starts now. Street vending has long been an issue in my community in Flushing. It got so bad that I had to pass a law to completely restrict vending in congested areas. Over the last years, those areas have still been overrun by vending, but it's been literally ignored by every city agencies tasked with regulating them. The mayor's office, NYPD, consumer affairs, DOT, no one wants anything to do with street vending and uh, enforcement. We even have multi-agency sweeps arranged after we got complaints, but many agencies just didn't bother to show up. It's obvious that there's simply no appetite by the mayor to direct any city agencies to enforce street vending. It doesn't matter that business people complain or that people get sick from the food or that smoke blows in the windows or if there's a lot of garbage on the streets, if there's no directive from the mayor, then nothing gets done. Um, I should say, if there's no directive from the mayor, there's, then nothing gets done. I am sympathetic to street vendors. I think they deserve a place in our city, but they need to be regulated and enforced just like everyone else. That hasn't happened in years. Because of this, I will be voting yes today. The reason is that this is the only concerted effort to create a dedicated enforcement agency whose only job is to enforce vending. I'm also pleased to see that this agency will be created first before lifting the cap and that you will be authorized to enforce unlicensed and licensed vending. It's time to stop passing the bug. Our regulatory Time. agencies, I need only 30 seconds more. Our regulatory agencies have spent too long standing around in circle with everyone pointing their finger at someone else. The bill is not perfect, but it's a good first step. And I truly hope you will put us on a path to work finally reaching out some equilibrium among both street vendors and brick and motor businesses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Ku. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Van Bramer, Jonai, Cabrera, and Cornegie. Jonai, Cabrera, Cornegie. I just want to remind everyone that we are only speaking on the bills that we are um, voting on today. Please proceed, Council Member Van Bramer. Time starts now. Thank you very much. Um, first, I just want to say, um, Street Vendor Bill, congratulations uh, to all of the advocates, uh, Council Member Chen, Chair Ayala, and of course, uh, former Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, uh, incredibly important. Um, and, and while I have great respect for Council Member Adams, who did uh, amazing work on the tax lien sale issue, I want to echo and associate myself with the comments of council member uh, Reynoso and, and say that I'll be voting no because this is still a, a problematic uh, and even predatory model uh, that uh, harms people and uh, particularly the most vulnerable and to do so and continue it in any way, shape or form, particularly during the pandemic uh, is uh, something that I can't support. Uh, but I know Council Member Adams uh, made uh, incredible uh, changes um, for the good. Uh, and, and lastly, I, I know um, I just want to thank uh, uh, Council Member Amprey Samuel for uh, uh, her legislation. Uh, I know clearly the majority leader has very, very passionate uh, feelings regarding this issue. Uh, and uh, and I'm sure she, she didn't mean it this way, but I just want to say that um, it is okay uh, to emulate uh, other cities. San Francisco uh, has a long and storied progressive tradition, particularly when it comes to uh, recognizing the value of queer people and our lives. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes good ideas uh, come out of San Francisco and, and other places that we can emulate 
as well. So uh, I just wanted to say uh, those three things with respect to the issues that we're taking up today. Thank you. Council Member Jonai. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I just want to speak up on the street vendor bill. There's no question that street vendors play a vital role in our city, but so do locally owned brick and mortar businesses. Unfortunately, this legislation unnecessarily fits one against the other. I do not doubt the intent of the bill, but there is an honest disagreement about the impact that this legislation will have on our struggling small businesses, of which many are women, minority and immigrant owned. Street vending has morphed into being a part of our lives and culture that competes head to head against struggling brick and mortar small business. In this current form, this bill leaves too many unanswered questions, some of which my colleagues have already mentioned. Others are vendors operating within a business improvement district. Will they contribute to the area's bid assessment that they benefit from and at the expense of brick and mortar business? Open storefronts program enacted to help save struggling small business and comply with COVID-19 protections. The question is, who will have the rights to the sidewalk first, the vendor or the brick and mortar store? Will it escalate to confrontations and a race of whomever gets there first? Who will be responsible for dirty sidewalks subjected to sanitation tickets? Tickets are issued to building addresses facing the sidewalk. Storefronts must have a commercial car to pick up their trash. Where will street vendors place their garbage? At whose expense? The cities where trash is placed on corner baskets? Or will it be placed at the brick and mortar garbage that the store pays for by weight? These are just a few of the concerns and questions that have been left unaddressed in this bill. Instead of an approach that many feel is one-sided, I would have rather, it would rather have been better for us to consider a comprehensive set of business rescue bills that give much needed assistance to all businesses and um, not us in the role of picking winners and losers. I just need a few more seconds, Majority Leader. Please continue. Thank you. I believe that brick and mortar businesses and street vendors can coexist in harmony with proper checks and balances. This bill does not do that. My opposition is not against street vendors. I would have preferred a bill that was fairer and a bill that would enforce street vendors to wait up to 10 years for a permit. As small business chair, I'll continue to advocate, encourage my colleagues to advocate for all small businesses that need grants, no interest loans and relief today. So I'll be voting no on intro 1116B. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Jonai, Councilmember Cabrera, followed by Councilmember Cornegy. Time Thank starts you. now. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to address the street vendors bill. I want to echo my colleague, uh, Councilmember Mark Jonah. Look, uh, this bill comes, I believe, from a good place. The sponsor of the bill, I know where her heart is at, and my colleagues as well. But it will have unintended consequences. And to be honest with you, I couldn't think of a worse time to do this. One out of seven chain stores are closed down. 40% of restaurants, mom and pops stores right here in the Bronx. I have multiple friends that already lost the store. They're not, they're not going to open. It's, it's over uh, totally for them. And then the issue of who's going to pay for this when well, we've been told that now there's going to be a three to one uh attrition when we have three uh workers in the city of new york they're going to leave uh, and we can only replace them we want it and we know that we are broke in the city and now i don't know where we're going to find this type of funding and when we when we have and the question i have to ask and especially right here in the Bronx, what have we done for our businesses? The Bronx only got 1%, 1% of the SBS loans, the brick and mortar, people who been there day in, day out for years, for years. I'm very, very concerned. I, I, I would have hoped that we would have had a more balanced 
And we do need to do, let me be clear, we need to do something for our street vendors. But uh, there's, an, um, there's a false balance here that at the end of the day, it's gonna cost more businesses uh, to close down. Thank you so much, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Cabrera. We'll now hear from Council Member Cornegy. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. Um, I, you know, I, I started to have a conversation about the street vendors bill and then I, then I heard Lori speak and, you know, I, I, we cannot negate the fact that African-American communities across this country have had a history of being disenfranchised uh, from their vote. And, and I think, you know, glossing over that really is a problem for me. And while I agree that um, the implementation or the ranked choice voting is here and we should pay close attention to it and we should educate our folks just glossing over the idea of that there's not a real issue around this. I mean, the federal government, for Christ's sakes, had to weigh in to make sure that our vote was protected as far as up north. So it wasn't even like, so I, I just want to be fair and let's not be disingenuous about the, the place where that kind of passion comes from. And then to hear Council Member Van Bramer draw a parallel between, you know, Lori's comments about the minimized um, demographics in uh, San Francisco to the LGBT community, I don't think that's what she was talking about. I don't think that was she, is what she was talking about. And, and it's hard for me to sit idly by. I usually mind my own business. Everybody in this council knows that I have my opinions and they usually, I keep them uh, to myself. I'm, I, I am going about the business of educating my community about ranked choice voting. I'm so glad for uh, uh, council member Anthony Samuel's bill which really puts into place the idea that we have to have the resources to educate, but I'm educated. Um, I, I don't wanna draw uh, this kind of, 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 of divisiveness around an issue that's germane to the black community. I think that's unfair and, and it really hurt me to kind of hear that. Lori doesn't need anybody to stand up for her, right? She doesn't. So, uh, you know, I really wanted to just talk about the street vendors bill, but I was so hurt by that exchange and how we so often to sway away from the real issue around um, disenfranchisement and add another layer to that, 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 that I'm sorry. And I'm sorry to have, you know, uh, uh, broke but I sat by and, and that really hurt, hurt me. And, 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 and so Lori, I know you don't need anybody to stand up for you, but I think that it's important that there's a context by which that passion around ranked choice voting and the disenfranchisement of the black vote uh, is important that we don't gloss over that. I'll, I'll leave my comments uh, around uh, around the, the bill to my vote, sorry. Thank you, Council Member Cornegy. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time? Yes, Council Member Barron. Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Lead. I just wanna talk briefly about four of the bills that we're voting on today. I'm so pleased that we're passing or we're going to pass 1116, the Street Vendors Project. We've been working on it for many, many years. Uh, former speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito and many members of that uh, group, including my husband, who was one of the prime sponsors, worked very diligently on that. And I'm glad to see that particularly at this time, we're going to give them an opportunity to be able to engage in an economic platform that will help sustain them. In terms of Bill 2206, the basement legalization, I'm so glad that that's being extended as well. Council Member Lander and I spent many hours talking with the administration about how we could strengthen that and make sure that we could expand that. And we're pleased to see that that's moving forward. Re regarding the ranked choice voting from Council Member Alika Ampri Samuel, I think that there's much that has to be done because it is here and we have to have it at this time. And I think we should also remember to tell people they have a choice of ranking. If they only wanna vote for one person that can simplify it and that is legal. And lastly, regarding bill 2166, uh, the lien sale, I have to echo the comments of my colleagues who cited all the reasons why it should not be happening, particularly at this time. And I join with them in their comments in that, and I will be voting no on that bill. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilman. Oh, one other thing. I forgot yes, one other thing. Just to ask us to be sensitive in our choice of words. Someone referred to uh, the black market and the black uh, sheep of the family at one previous meeting. And I would like for us to be sensitive to using the word black when we're talking about things that are negative. Dr. Martin Luther King in one of his speeches reminded us that of the 120 odd synonyms in a thesaurus, more than half of them relating to black were all associated with negative uh, things that were um, not positive. Whereas all of the synonyms referring to white were positive. So please, I would encourage my colleagues to refrain from talking about the black market. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, <clears throat> Council Member Yeager. Council Member Yeager, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, there are a number of bills that I support, and I'm, I'm grateful uh, to my colleagues for introduction, uh, for introducing them and for moving them to the floor today, uh, and many of them for the reasons that were stated earlier, so I'm not going to revisit that. I would like to talk about introduction uh, 2166, the lean sale bill, and I want to make it very clear, and it ought to be said before we vote. If we do nothing today on this topic, there will be no lean sale this year or next year or the year after that, period. So the idea that we are doing reforms, unquestionably, this bill has reforms that the previous versions of this law did not have. But if we all go home right now and do not vote on this bill, there will be no lien sale. So when we wrap ourselves around the idea that we've reformed the lien sale, we also have to remember what the lien sale does. The lien sale privatizes the collection of the city's debt into the market of debt collectors. It takes away homes from people in our city. It has done that historically. It will continue to do that. And the next time it happens, it will be because of us. This council, this session, today, we're the ones who did it. So I'm not going to vote for this bill. I, I appreciate incredibly the work that uh, my colleagues, uh, and, and particularly Councilmember Adams, who has worked for hours to get the city, the administration, to roll back some of the harshness of the previous ways that this uh, legislation has, has manifested itself. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is very clear. If we do not pass this bill, there will be no lien sale. And so with that, I, I urge my colleagues, please stand up today, vote no on 2166, end this misery that's being inflicted upon our communities, and let's not have this lien sale this year. This is not the time for it. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you so much, Council Member Yeager. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. All right, thank you. This has been um, a very good spirited and passionate um, exchange on the floor today. Um, we will now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 2161, Workplace Health and Safety Board. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 2162A, Occupational Safety and Health Information. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, Intro 1116B, Food Vendor Permits. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 2166B, Tax Liens. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intros 1420C and 1832B, 311 Service and Complaints. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1994, Ranked Choice Voting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, pre-considered intro 2204A, Basement Apartments. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, pre-considered LU 716 and Reso 1536, Intermediate School, Council District 39. Couple of general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general order calendar. Adam. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts Thank now. Thank you. 
with all due respect to my colleagues um, who don't agree with intro to um, 166B, this is actually, and I wonder if a lot of my colleagues have read the bill, that, that's my first um, concern. This is actually an anti-Giuliani-esque reform that among other things, removes homeowners from eligibility of the tax lien sale. Um, we have substantial support from our advocates who are at the table with us for this important reform. This actually is going to keep folks in their homes, something that has never been looked at before. So to call it a tragedy, I think that that is a bit extreme. However, I respect your opinion. And I also doubt that the original, original supporter and advocate reformer of such legislation, that being our attorney general, I hardly believe that she would support this legislation if it were such a tragedy. I thank my colleagues who are uh, passing legislation today. And once again, I ask my colleagues to fully support this very important reform. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Adams. And Council Member Adams, you vote, please. I vote aye. Thank you. And Bree Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I thank my 30 other colleagues who co sponsored intro 1994. And I want to remind everyone that the vote was in November of 2019. And I stood with Borough President Eric Adams three months after on a cold day in February in front of the Board of Elections at 42 Broadway, speaking directly to the media, calling on the administration to allocate funding to community groups to help in rolling out ranked choice voting. And this bill was introduced last summer. I totally understand everyone's point. Well, to Majority Leader Cumbo and Council Member Cornegan, I totally understand your point and wish we were in a different place, but we are here and we're operating within a system that is not necessarily designed to support us. As of today, the State Board of Elections came out to say that they will work with the City Board of Elections to help implement RCV. So if this is something that is going to move forward, I don't want to miss the opportunity to educate the people. The pandemic climate makes voter education on a new system even more imperative. I have a duty and we all have a duty and responsibility to do what we can, when we can, with what we have. And so with that, I just want to you know, ask everyone for their support and to vote yes on 1994. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Council Member Samuel. Ayala. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Council Member Adams for all of her work. It takes great leadership to do something. I mean, it's easy to just sit back and do nothing. And I think that she's been working tirelessly and we need to recognize her efforts. Um, I trust her leadership and I will be voting in the affirmative on her bill. Um, I really wanted to also address uh, the issues regarding intro 1116. I want to thank Margaret. I want to thank the speaker and his team who have been you know, phenomenal throughout this process. Um, I, you know, I, I, it really saddens me when, um, you know, we in this body, you know, contribute to pitting one community against the other. This is a big city, there's room for all of us. And I think that you have a committed body that is dedicated to ensuring that brick and mortar businesses do not suffer um, from any unintended consequences. And we look forward to working with all of the colleagues um, who may have issues or concerns in their own districts to address any of those. Um, I support this bill wholeheartedly because I have seen with my own eyes and I have spoken you know, to countless primarily women of color who get up extremely early in the morning, four and five o'clock in the morning to be out there in the cold, in the rain, in the snow, to be able to feed their families and still fall short because they have to pay someone who actually has the permit, you know, upwards of $20,000 a year. That is criminal. And the fact that we have allowed that to happen for most of my lifetime is really a shame and is a, sh is a, is a stain on this city. So I am really proud of this work. 
And I, again, I will I happily work with any one of you that has any concerns, but I really hope that you reconsider your vote and that you support this because supporting this bill is supporting immigrants, uh, the immigrant community in this city, is supporting people that employ others in this city, uh, a, a time. Community that puts resources into the local economy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Council Member Ayala. Ano. Thank you. <laughs> Baron. Request to uh, explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, I just wanna make sure that uh, I did understand the bill related to the lean, so the lean sale and that it did say a million dollars outreach uh, by CBOs, not the DOF. It did provide for some persons uh, who had exempt, would be granted exemptions because of COVID. And it did reauthorize a task force to reform the tax lien and remove hedge funds. And in addition to that, it extends the lien sale for one year. So I wanted to make sure that I had read it properly. Um, and with that, I just want to say I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 2166, on which I'm voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Borelli. Thank you. Uh, I am voting aye on all except intros 1116B and 2082. Thank you very much. Brandon. Councilmember Brandon. We'll come back to Councilmember Brandon. Okay. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. I'll be very brief. I, I just want to lend support to my colleague, Council Member Anthony Samuel. Uh, look, I, I stood also uh, before uh, you all with Council Member Miller and the BLAC. We stood against ranked choice voting, but we have to deal with the realities, not uh, a situation that we don't, a reality that we, we wish we had. So within that context, it just makes sense for our community to be properly informed. And just not take away any arguments that have been made here. Uh, all the arguments regarding RCD are valid. Uh, but we have to do with what we have. Either we take what we have right now, or we could make it better. Not an ideal, but better. And so with that, I'll be voting I on all with the exception of 1116B and 2166B. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Cabrera. Councilmember Chin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank, thank you. I think to my colleague, in the city council, we have worked very hard to support our small businesses. And street vendors are also small businesses. And we have to give them the hope that they can prosper. And I think that, you know, colleagues are concerned about enforcement. Um, this bill will start to address that. It's not a perfect bill, but it's a beginning to organize this chaotic system that have existed for so long in our city. New York City is on our way to recovery and we have to include everyone and we have to work together. And there are great examples of vendors working together with more, you know, brick and mortar business. They bring customers to each other. So we have to see that that is what's going on out there too. And I also wanted to, you know, congratulate my colleague, um, April Samuel Miller and Adam for this important legislation that we're voting on today. And Chair Ayala, I'm so glad that you're chairing the committee so we could finally get out the vote out. And also to uh, Jason Goldman for your guidance and support. Uh, 
to get this to the finish line. And also all the advocates, all the vendors and Sweet Vendor Projects leadership, Mohammed, Karina, Matt, and all those marches and rally and the heat and the cold, all these years of hard work. Let's get this over to the finish line. And I really urge my colleague to really support this legislation. And I'm proudly to vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Borelli. Uh, I apologize for having to change the vote. I said the wrong number and I don't want the wrong council member to be mad at me. So I'll be voting aye on all except 1116B. And uh, now I'll be voting no on 2204, which is from council member Powers. Uh, I just wanna make sure he knows that. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Brannon. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Constantinidis. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, may be allowed to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Uh, thank you for that, uh, that opportunity. I will be voting aye on all today, but I am going to express some of my concern with the administration and the administration uh, shrugging their shoulders too often at small businesses. Uh, you know, I know of you know, three, uh, a bro two brothers and a sister who came from Croatia, who worked hard, worked three jobs to open a restaurant. And because they were across the street from a commercial zone, they were told they had to re get rezoning of their building to get a sidewalk cafe. And that would have cost them $50,000. I know of a, a business, small business in my district where uh, they're not able to do right in front of their, their building uh, outdoor dining. And, and every, you know, everyone from DOT and in this administration shrugs their shoulders at them. And yet this business and their employees are in danger of closing. So today I'm glad to support 1166 and support our street vendors. But I hope this administration is not going to continue to shrug their shoulders and continue to leave small businesses in a bad way at a time where we need to find solutions and not just say, well, this is the way things are. Uh, asking $50,000 for a sidewalk cafe to have their building rezoned. Uh, we should be looking to make sure our streets are for all. We should be making sure we're supporting small businesses. We should be making sure we're doing everything possible because the world has changed in the last year. And yet the administration's response to small businesses has not. So that's why I'm, I'm passionate about fighting for our small businesses and doing more while I'm still supporting this bill today, 1116. So thank you to my colleagues. Congratulations on all of your hard work. And I look forward forward to uh, continue to work with you all on these issues. I vote aye on all again. Thank you. Carnegie. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. I've spent the entirety of my adult life committed to supporting immigrant and my minority entrepreneurs that have faced an uneven playing field. I was solidly with 1116 when it was written. I remain solidly with its goals. But COVID-19 drastically changed the landscape. I reject the myth that vendors have to compete with storefronts. We can support both. When we wrote this bill, we were not picking one side over the other, but that changed because of the pandemic. The bill must live up to its intention without disenfranchising another valuable city resource, our brick, our brick and mortar businesses. Increased street traffic helps everyone, but how can we manage that means success or failure for small businesses? It's not mutually exclusive to support all entrepreneurs, including street vendors, traditional brick and mortars, and app-based companies, all of which will play a respective role in revitalizing the state's economy. If we approach present and future legislation with thoughtfulness, contextualize our advocacy, we must stop pitting one against the other. Failure to consult with all sides leads to unintended consequences. So I propose an inclusive process with more stakeholders Let's live up to the goals of this bill by adjusting the realities to the pandemic. There is a reasonable expectation that we can start a new dialogue that includes all small entrepreneurs. Thank you, and I look forward to a better way to support street vendors. I'll be voting yes on all except 1116. Thank you, Councilmember Carnegie. Deutsch. Mission, Majority Leader, to explain my vote. 
permission granted, Council Member Deutsch. Good to see Time you. Time starts now. Thank you. Can I get 15 minutes like the majority, Leah? <laughs> Don't blow yeah. it. Every year on January 27th, which was yesterday, we commemorate International Holocaust Remembrance Day. It is a day to reflect upon the lives lost during the Holocaust and to honor the memories of the victims. I often talk about the fact that my parents were survivors of unspeakable horror during the, horror, uh, during the Holocaust and how they shaped my worldview. Today, I wanna to take a moment to speak about the incredible stories of bravery, heroism, and faith displayed by victims of Nazi brutality. One story is about two sisters who were imprisoned in Auschwitz during the war, just 14 and 16 years old. They had a friend who was in the same barracks as them who fell ill without medical attention. And being sick, being sick in the concentration camp was a painful and slow death sentence. But these girls tried everything to save their friend's life. She was a desperate for water, but there was none available. So every night these girls would burrow through the floorboards and climb into the freezing cold mud under the barracks. There under the barracks, there were pipes covered in condensation. Each night they would spend hours sucking the condensation off the pipes, spitting it into a bowl, and then feeding their friend that liquid. They saved her life. Another story tells the tale of a young man who was in a concentration camp in Poland. He was ordered by his Nazi guards to go into a shed where dead bodies were stored until they could be cremated. The Nazi told this young man to bring him a pair of pants off one of the bodies. Inside the shed, the man felt around and found pants for the Nazi. Before he brought them outside, he noticed there were pages in the pocket. He pulled them out and found an entire section of the Talmud, a holy Jewish book. He smuggled those pages back into his barracks. And every night, he and a friend would sit outside under the moonlight, studying the Talmud. Um, In the midst of hell, they kept the Jewish souls alive through the suffering. They both survived the war and lost contact. Fifty years later, the once man was marrying off his granddaughter. At the wedding, he met this old friend from the concentration camp who was the grandfather of the groom. Finally, I want to share a story of another young man in Auschwitz. He was only 15 years old, and he was, he was assigned to work in the kitchen. Every day, under the watchful eyes of the Nazi guards, he and the other prisoners would prepare food for their fellow inmates. And each day, they would watch as food went into the trash, even as the prisoners were starving to death. Finally, this young man couldn't take it anymore. Risking his life, he would smuggle potato skins out of the garbage and under her shirt. In the barracks, he would distribute those meager portions to the sick, the elderly, and the children. That 15-year-old boy survived the war, and he moved to America, where he raised four sons with his wife, another survivor. He was my father, and he was my hero. The victims of the Holocaust endured tragedies we can hardly bear to imagine, but we can honor their memories by remembering their bravery, their bravery and by continuing to support the Holocaust survivors who remain here in New York City. God bless America, God bless our Holocaust survivors, and God bless you all. With that, I vote aye and all, uh, no on 1116B. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Deutsch, and thank you for um, allowing us all to remember as well today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Yes, yeah, sorry, I sent a note. That's for general discussion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Council Member Dharma Diaz. You're on mute. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was. I um. I'll be quick. I just um. Yes to all, but I'd like to just make a comment on the food vendor bill. During COVID and, and trying to eat locally, I, I experienced two allergic reactions, which um, that was due to gross contamination. So I'm asking for, um, in this process, for the Department of Health to do due diligence as we're out there and, and we're grading. If a vendor says they have two, two skillets, you know, let's test them and, and let's make sure. I was trying to have a fish taco and it was contaminated with pork. I quickly began 
to have an allergic reaction. And obviously that was not a good point, for, um, good time for me. So in, in voting yes to rent a bill, I just ask that we do due diligence and assure that we pay attention to us, that to those that have food allergies. Thank you. That's yes on all. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. Uh, I'm voting yes on all, except introduction 1116 and 2166. I bless you all. Happy New Year. Thank you, Councilmember Diaz. Drum. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Eugene. You're muted, council member, Eugene. I vote, thank you very much, I appreciate that, thank you. I vote aye. Thank you. Gibson. Thank you, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues, speaker. Uh, this has been a, a very long stated, but I have appreciated all of the comments about the bills on today's agenda. I definitely want to commend the work of Councilmember Adams and all the advocates and our Attorney General for really putting together a much better bill that we can support. I'm proud to support that bill. And Councilmember uh, Sam, Amphrey Samuel, thank you so much for your bill as well. And over my colleagues, I wanted to speak very quickly about the street vendor bill. Um, because during this global pandemic that hit our country, I really had the honor to join the Street Vendor Project and our entrepreneurs at many food distributions in my district at a time when food insecurity was the greatest. So many families lost their employment, their income, and have struggled for basic necessities such as healthy food. I want to thank all the vendors who've supported our residents and families during this time. Our street vendors have long endured a system of inequity and unregulation for the past 40 years. The challenges they've faced streamlining the vendor industry and achieving a balance and recognizing all of the challenges that have been faced is what we're talking about today. Our vendors have experienced a crisis that has been further exacerbated by COVID. They have been subjected to harassment, inconsistent enforcement and exploitation because of a cap restriction that's been in place since the 1980s. Today's legislation put forth by council member Chen breathes new life into this industry that has provided a valuable service. There is room in our communities for all small businesses, merchants, and our vendors, many of whom are entrepreneurs and small businesses of color. This legislation is a great step forward to begin a process to gradually increase the number of food permits issued. I wanna thank the Street Vendor Project, UJC, all of our chambers of commerce, our bids, NSA, our supermarkets, grocery stores, bodegas, small businesses who have all reached out to provide important input and amendments to strengthen this bill. I am grateful to have worked with our small businesses and our Time. vendors during the pandemic, uh, just 30 seconds, uh, during the pandemic to bring much needed relief. Businesses have stepped up and so have our vendors. This bill is really a step forward in the right direction to achieve economic justice and reform. Now the work will begin with our agencies and stakeholders on the advisory board and the implementation. Thank you, Council Member Chin, for your relentless efforts, Council Member Menchaca, and all of my colleagues, the Street Vendor Project, and all the advocates on a job well done. I'm proud to support, I vote aye on all, and thank you colleagues for all of your important bills today. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Jonah. Permission to explain my vote, Majority Leader? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. It's don't show, don't tell me how much you love me. Show me how much you love me. And what we've told the borough of the Bronx in particular and the outer boroughs and our small businesses in their greatest time of need is you don't matter, especially if you come from the outer boroughs the total grant and loan program that was offered to all 240,000 small businesses in New York City is a total of $8.5 million, $85 million, of which only four to five million came directly from the city's taxpayers' um, coffers. The total equivalents to $350 per business 
not enough to even pay the utility charges for many of our small businesses. We have forced them to shut down through no fault of their own. The pandemic has been the devastation of their business models. And in their greatest time of need, rather than give them relief in the form of grants, no interest loans, or relief from real estate taxes and water and sewer, today we also discourage them from opening their doors if ever. One third of our small businesses will not survive this pandemic. And that's of many small businesses that are women owned, minority owned, and immigrant owned. We don't have to peg one against the other. In intro 2166 does not go far enough for to protect our homeowners from real estate tax and water and sewer tax needs. Another injustice that we're allowing to occur today. Um, I can't see light at the end of the time any longer. I sit side by side with all those that are struggling through this fright through this pandemic and crisis, shoulder to shoulder, trying to help and encourage them to survive. I don't no longer have the strength to encourage them to survive this pandemic when we continue work to undermine their very existence. With that, I would eye on all with the exception of 1116. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Jonai. Gordonchik. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't request to speak on the legislation today, but I would uh, ask that I be added uh, to the list of people who wish to speak following our vote today when I will discuss the vaccination desert that is Eastern Queens. Um, so with that, I vote aye on all, uh, except for 1116B, which I am voting no on today. Thank you, Madam uh, Majority Leader. Thank you. Holden. I vote aye on all with the exception of intros 1116B and 2204, which I vote no. Thank you, Council Member Holden. Kalos. I vote aye on all. Ku. Council Member Ku, are you on mute? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I, I will I on all. Thank you. I on all. Thank you. <clears throat> Got it. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I vote I on all, and congratulations to Margaret Chin and also to Council Member Adrian Adams. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Got a majority leader. Uh, speak quickly on four of the bills on today's calendar. First, uh, I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of 2204A, the basement accessory dwelling unit bill with Councilmember Diaz. Congratulations on your first bill. As Councilmember Barron said, we have been proud to work hard to get it to this point. Um, but we're going to handing it off to you and council member Adams to get it across the finish line. That program needs to succeed. It needs to scale up, enabling New Yorkers to be able to regularize those basement units. It's critical for affordable housing. Proud to co-sponsor it with you and look forward to you and council member Adams carrying it forward. Second, uh, big props on 1994 to council member Amprey Samuel. We've been talking about this for a long time, but it is so critical to have good public education about ranked choice voting as we have the first elections where it's taking place. And you have not let a difficult issue or challenges or even your own questions about whether it should happen let up from making sure people get the information that they need. Um, and it's great we're voting on it today. And I wanna thank you for fighting to get it to this point. Council member Margaret Chin, congratulations. Uh, this has been an incredibly, incredibly long struggle and I've been so lucky to be you know, your ally. You've been our champion, props to the Street Vendor Project. I wanna say thank you to all the folks who weighed in on this, including small business uh, advocates um, who made the bill better even where they don't agree with it. 
it's true, we have not done enough to show up for our brick and mortar small businesses and we need to do more. I'm introducing a bill today and there's a lot of others, but that is no reason at all to make sure that we stand by the set of immigrant, largely women, hardworking New Yorkers. I don't know about all of you, but one of my favorite kids books was The Pushcart War. I don't know if you read The Pushcart War. That was a war between the street vendors and the trucks, not the brick and mortar businesses. Um, but it was one of the ways I thought about who's working hardest. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, can I have 30 more um, seconds? Please, please, you can continue. Thank you very much. So I urge people to go back and read the Pushcart War and remember just how heroic our street vendors are, how much they matter for our city. But we don't want any war here. What we want is to be able to do right by those street vendors and by our brick and mortar small businesses. So let's pass this today and then let's get back to doing things that help everyone. Uh, and finally, I want to speak to intro 2166. I first want to praise Councilmember Adams' work on this. She made this bill so, so much better and fought tirelessly on something and moved things that I don't think anyone thought would be possible. So I want to give uh, you a lot of praise on this, Councilmember. I had pledged publicly that I would not support a lien sale during the pandemic or during the remainder of my year in office, and I'm going to live up to that and vote no on this bill, but I think you have done an excellent job making it better and working it hard to defend homeowners in your district and around the city. Uh, so with that, I'm voting aye on all except for 2166 on which I vote no with congratulations to all of those bill sponsors and all of my colleagues. Thank you. Levin. Thank you, Councilman Belander. Mm -hmm. Councilman um, Levin. Yes, I, I vote aye on all. In particular, I want to acknowledge the um, significant work um, that Councilmember Chin um, did on the vendor bill. Um, uh, Councilmember Adams did on um, the lien sale reform legislation, and Councilmember Amber Campbell did on uh, the choice of voting bills. None of these were easy issues. Um, these were significantly difficult issues um, where um, they required a lot of um, judgment, um, a lot of good faith effort, um, and a lot of uh, uh, purpose and intent, um, which is often what legislation requires. It's not always um, that we get everything that we're hoping for um, or everything that we want or even most of what we want. Um, but it is, um, um, it requires an ability to see the bigger picture and, um, and work towards a just resolution. And I commend all three of my colleagues in particular for the work that they did on this legislation. And I also want to acknowledge the great work that the Street Venture Project has done and, and um, a former speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, and our current speaker, Corey Johnson. Um, on, on, on the street vendors bill. Um, I've been a, a, a really proud friend of the vendors um, since my first term in office when we did the, the um, reduction of the fines legislation. So I congratulate them on, uh, on a hard fought victory today, many, many years. Um, and um, uh, I wanna acknowledge the great work of um, Muhammad and, uh, and before him, Sean Bezinski, um, for really putting their hearts and souls into that. Time. Um, and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you so much. Uh, I first want to express my gratitude to the leadership of Councilmember Adams for doing so much to reform the lien sale process and to provide more protection than ever for struggling homeowners. And I also want to thank all the leaders who have brought 1116 to the floor for a vote today after years of work, starting with Councilmember Chen, who's just fought relentlessly for this. I want to thank Speaker Johnson for making this possible. And I want to thank the past council speaker, Mark Viverito, who really laid the groundwork for this. Uh, to make it possible to happen today. I wanna to thank the, the street vendors themselves who organized relentlessly, strategically for years to make this possible. And I wanna thank 
small business owners who also worked hard to help shape this bill and in many ways made it better. And ultimately, 1116 does three important things. First, it's going to drain the exploitative illegal market in permits. Secondly, it's going to create more economic opportunity for struggling micro entrepreneurs. And thirdly, it's going to bring about more consistent and fair enforcement. And so this really is a win for the city. Uh, proud to be supporting it and we'll be voting aisle and all. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Madam Majority Leader, I would like to congratulate all my colleagues whose legislation is being passed today. As a council, we have enacted several bills to support small businesses, especially bills for our local mom and pop shops. We've also, we also know that street vendors are crucial to revitalizing local neighborhoods and our city's economy by removing barriers to healthy and affordable goods. Central Brooklyn has a heavy immigrant population and there are entrepreneurs that will rely on opportunities that intro 1116 would create to support their families. So I wanna thank you council member Chin and the advocates for your leadership on this issue. I also would like to thank the countless housing advocates who reached out and helped support Chair Adams and all of our colleagues to push back and get the administration to make significant reforms to intro 2116. Thank you, Chair Adams, for your tireless efforts, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. My uh, vote. Yes, and all except 2116, uh, 1116B. Thank you. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Majority leader. And uh, I want to continue with my remarks on the street vendor bill uh, to also thank the incredible organizers at the street vendor project. Uh, they have been incredible in bringing vendors from across the city together, uh, educating them about the process, uh, learning a lot about the legislative process, but also pushing us to ensure that we had their interests at heart. The New York Immigration Coalition was incredible as well uh, in ensuring that good information got out and that we had the support at the end of the day. Um, the, uh, the, the, the more special shout out goes to all the street vendors in Sunset Park. You know, they're the ones that reminded me of the incredible work before I became a council member that they had to do in Sunset Park. Uh, that work was met with um, open hearts and open minds, but led to um, a dysfunctional response from the city. This bill is gonna create the ability for a, a sensitive, culturally sensitive team of people who will be able to uh, react, not like the police do right now, which um, often endanger so many of our immigrants and our streets uh, and lead them towards a deportation proceeding. That will all change. That's something that makes me so proud to be a part of this and so thankful for all of you to standing up today and saying yes to, to the bill. Um, on the reauthorization of the tax lien sale, I wanna also echo the thanks to Councilmember Adams for really uh, getting in there. Um, I've learned so much about this uh, through her and her team and the advocates, but uh, the reduction of the authorization of one year is it is a huge win and I wanna say thank you. But fundamentally, I believe that we have to abolish the tax lien. We have to abolish the tax lien and create alternatives that support wealth creation in communities who have historically been kept out Time. of systemic inequalities that exist. That's what we're fighting here. Uh, and we gotta prevent pred predatory private actors. I will be voting no on 2166B and I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Menchaca. Miller. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Time Thank starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I, I, I'd first like to congratulate and, uh, my sisters, uh, Council Member Adams, Ampri News, and the leader and conscious of the caucus, Council Member Margaret Chen, on the great work that they did on today's legislation uh, being passed. Um, I also want to add context to 2161 and 2162. 
uh, the, the bills uh, that are being passed today uh, and from civil service and labor. Last week uh, at the Board of Election Queens site uh, on the heels of the last month on the Board of Elections Bronx site, there was a Corona uh, 19 outbreak. Um, DCAS swooped in, uh, tested all of their workers on site, did a deep cleaning, sent their workers home. Do it did the same, but the Board of Elections left their workers there for another five days. It is these type of inconsistencies and the lack of uniformity in, in um, work for, workplace safety governance that, that really makes this legislation necessary. And time and time again, we've heard this over the past 10 months that workers weren't given uh, access to PPEs, training for PPEs, and the type of support that they need in going out and doing the job that makes New Yorkers life so seamless. So I ask us all to, uh, all of our colleagues to support 2161, 2162. Uh, I will be voting aye on all with the exception of 2204. I will be consistent and abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye on all. Perkins. Get this in again. Aye on all. Thank you. Powers. I, I vote aye on all. I want to say congratulations, everyone, for a number of bills on here today, which I know came with a lot of work or a very long period of time. So I want to say congrats to everyone who worked on those. And I want to say a very special shout out to my uh, colleague, Joe Borelli in Staten Island. Uh, I vote aye. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time Thank starts you, now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to uh, start by saying uh, congratulations to Councilmember Margaret Chin for the work that she did with the street renders bill. Um, but I do think we need to uh, pay attention to the fact that helping the street vendors does not mean that we can't help small businesses. Uh, I was able to pass a bill related to outdoor dining that really reimagined our streets and gave a lifeline to many small businesses in our community. It did it equitably by allowing all restaurants to be able to use the outdoor spaces um, without having to spend any money. Uh, because of it, it, we're gonna be a new New York City when we come out of this pandemic, making that permanent. Uh, but there's a lot more we can do as a city council to help small businesses. There's tons of bills that have been introduced by council members um, that can really affect change for small businesses. And they're not up, they're just not up. And we need to start forcing the hand here, uh, make sure that uh, the small business committee is hearing these and that we're passing them so that this is not a street vendors versus small business conversation. This is about helping them all. And we can do that. We have the power, we have the authority, and we have the legislation. So I'm hoping uh, that in the next stated, there are a slew of uh, 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 small business bills that we can pass um, and not make this uh, us versus them when everyone, everyone uh, should be getting help during the pandemic. Uh, with the, uh, I wanna vote I on all with the exception of intro 21, Six six. Um, I agree that uh, Council Member Adrian Adams has done an amazing job at looking uh, towards the reform, but I still think that this is one a, one item that should have never existed in the first place. Um, and if there is an opportunity for us to stop it from continuing to exist, we should take that. Um, so again, I will iron all with the exception of Intro Twenty One Sixty Six B. And I do want to say for the last ten seconds, uh, Council Member Alika Amper Samuel. Um, is absolutely right. There are some people that are going to fight, some people that are going to educate, um, uh, and we all play our roles in exactly how this ranked choice voting is going to happen. And for her to find money and resources to educate, um, I think is valuable. Um, it doesn't mean that other parallel fights can't happen. So again, I'm grateful for her work there as well. Um, again, I vote I don't know with the exception of intro 2166. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Riley. I don't know. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to thank Councilmember Margaret Chin, Speaker Johnson, and all of the advocates 
who fought to pass this important legislation, 11116. This is your victory. Let's remember many of our city's most successful restaurants started out as food carts owned by immigrant entrepreneurs looking to make their way in the city. Vending is simply put one of the most crucial economic pathways out of poverty for immigrant New Yorkers, and they are undoubtedly New York City landmark businesses. Hot pretzels, juice carts, Mr. Softy, people follow them on social and they go to them like fans to an artist. But our city has failed for decades to address the bad policies, the bureaucracy, the inaction that resulted in a 30 year cap on new food vendor permits. The exploitation and corruption is so widespread that an estimated 70 to 80% of the city's vending permits are being used illegally, according to data from the Street Vendor Project. Earlier today, we rallied with street vendors. They said this was a tremendous relief, like a boulder was being lifted from their shoulders. People who are street vendors because their fathers were, because their children are hungry. They have fed our New York City families forever bringing their own cultural identity to our city blocks. And we should thank them for that. And the ultimate goal here was always to balance the needs of vendors, customers, residents, and brick and mortar establishments. And I wanna thank our legislative and legal divisions and Jason Goldman for working tirelessly with vendors, bids, supermarkets, and restaurants. I know that not everyone agrees with this bill, but at the very least I can say that people across the city and at least bids in Manhattan have recognized the real work done to make improvements to the legislation and they respect the tremendous organizing done. So with respect to all of these small businesses, our street vendors, I proudly vote aye on all to ensure that vendors are a welcome part of any community in New York City. Thank you. Thank Rodriguez. You. Sorry, Rodriguez, Councilman Rodriguez. Yes. So as I, as I explained before, I'm proud of how hard Margaret Chen and all the colleagues been working when it comes to the street vendor. However, I do want to highlight that for me, it is important also to recognize the great job, not only of the great leader of the street vendor project, but also all the members of the small business community, such as Nelson Eusebio from the Supermarket Association, Jeffrey Garcia from the Restaurant Association, who also has been part of this conversation. And I hope again that the most important thing that they've been asking for, enforcement, enforcement, enforcement must be done. Whatever term we want to use it, we have to take away, take out those people who are conducting criminal action by charging people those permits that we give them as a, for the city, supposedly for them to work on it, and they are renting those permits, as I have been said, for fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. Hoy nosotros tenemos que trabajar para defender a los pequeños negociantes, a los dueños de supermercados, de restaurant, como también defendemos a los personas que venden en la calle. I will always defend a street vendor that have one or two tables in the street, saying tamale, saying any type of item. But I have issue when there's twenty tables in the street, turning as a bodega, as a supermarket, and be called a street vendor. So let's work on the enforcement. Let's be sure that we support those street vendors that are selling food in the truck, those that have one or two table, but let's go after those that they turn in court in our street as supermarkets and bodega. Vamos a trabajar juntos para apoyar a los vendedores de la calle, a los que venden tamales, a los que tienen una mesa vendiendo, pero no podemos permitir que se abran 10 mesas frente a un supermercado, una bodega, vendiendo los mismos productos. With that, I'm Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. 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 Thank you, Councilman for shepherding these very difficult but beneficial bills across the finish line. I wanna especially um, give a shout out to my Women's Caucus colleagues, council members Chen, Adam, and Amper Samuels, who worked really hard to make sure that the bills that we are passing today have benefit to of the communities that all of us represent. Thank you. And I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilmember Rose. 
Rosenthal. Uh, I vote aye on all. And I just want to point out that of all the bills we're passing today, there are three very complicated bills that I know took a great deal of negotiation and grace. And I want to congratulate the council women, council members Chin, Adams, and Amprey Samuels that got them over the finish line. And council member Rose, great minds think alike. I vote aye on all. Thank you so much. Salamanca. Aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I am asking for permission to vote on all land use items as well, if I may. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, I'm requesting unanimous consent. I apologize. Permission granted. Thank you. I'm voting aye on all land use matters, and I'm voting aye on all today with the exception of uh, intro number 1116B, uh, and I um, hope everybody's staying healthy. Thank you very much. I vote no on that bill and aye on all others. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Valone. The Madam Majority Leader, maybe I explain by vote, please. Permission granted. Time starts Thanks. now. Thank you, my dear. You know how I am at multitasking, and now I'm mobile at the moment, so <laughs> bear with me. This is not easy. Um, you know, listening to the passions of the council members today for you as Majority Leader should make you very proud. I for am. The amount of work. Yeah, for the amount of work that everyone has put in over the years. Uh, wherever you fall on these bills, it's a testament to the council members and how hard they've worked and how needed they really are. You know, I've always been a steadfast supporter of our small businesses and restaurants. And I, I think what's important to note what everyone's kind of saying today is we're all in agreement that the time is overdue for re-regulations and protection for the vendor industry and that they've been working under this ridiculous market that has existed. My, my opposition to the bill is we could have done all that, but we should have done all that long ago. Um, but we didn't have to expand and double the amount of the licenses at a time when that industry is collapsing. The restaurants and small business industry, simply put, is collapsing. And the timing of this bill, we could have done the re- protection of the industry without doing everything at once, which is what my point was from the very beginning. We should have held off in abeyance the expansion until the COVID crisis has been in place. So many council members have said we should be doing more and we haven't for restaurants and small businesses. And the time is now. And I cannot support that bill that does not create the equity for all. We keep saying we should do more for small businesses. It's time for this. It was, and we could have, and we should have changed this market. So we heard council member Rivera's passion about how hard it was to get into that field and, and that needed to be addressed, but we did too much. Um, and so what I'd like to say is we need to immediately, critically look the surviving restaurants and explain, we should have given exclusionary zones. We should have listened to the bids. We should have made sure that placement was fair to all. We didn't do that. So with that, um, I'd like to, let me just switch over, say I, I vote I and all, except for intro 1116 and pre-considered intro 2204. Uh, and thank you, Councilman Behind Deutsch for your passionate remarks about your community. God bless you. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts thank now. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, congratulations to Council Member Chin and Chair Ayala. Uh, the street vendor bill is an amazing victory uh, for workers, uh, for immigrants, and I'm proud to support it. And everyone who fought to make it happen should be proud. Uh, I am voting no on 2166B, but again, want to uh, extend my great respect to Councilmember Adams for the amazing work that she did on this. Um, few could have done what she did. 
um, and I respect that work a great deal. Uh, I do want to say because it just became public um, uh, while we're meeting that the mayor has agreed to open up the outer roadway of the Queensboro Bridge uh, for cyclists, uh, which is something I have been uh, fighting for for years. Uh, and council member uh, Kalos uh, joined me in that effort because the bridge spans our two districts. The mayor will be announcing this in his state of the city speech, uh, but I want to applaud all of the activists, uh, all of the folks who have fought for a safer Queensboro bridge. For years, we've marched, we've rallied, uh, we've put up the money, uh, council member Kalos and I, uh, to make this happen, uh, walked the bridge with the DOT, Commissioner, and uh, it is going to save lives. It is going to make this bridge safer for everyone uh, to walk across, uh, to ride their bike across, uh, and in, in a time when more people are riding bikes because of the pandemic to get into and out of Manhattan and to Queens. This could not come at a better time. Uh, it is a major victory uh, for everyone who cares about a safer Queensboro Bridge uh, and for the right of everyone uh, to traverse their streets and even their bridges uh, safely. So congratulations to every single person, transportation um, alternatives and everyone who fought to make this a reality. Thank you very much. And I vote aye on everything else except for 2166B. Thank you. Thank you. Jaeger. Thank you, Madam President. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, uh, uh, I would like to begin just by thanking Councilman Deutsch for his words on uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day. He is uh, he's long known for speaking about uh, his parents, whom, whom I knew, uh, and, and their trials and how they made it to America. Um, uh, and as Chaim knows, four of my great grandparents uh, dozens of my great aunts, uncles, uh, cousins were murdered by the Nazis, along with uh, six million members of Chaim and my family. Um, if never again is to mean anything, uh, I think we have a lot more to do. And uh, I'm grateful for Chaim's words today. He's always a strong voice of moral authority on this. Um, uh, Council Member Dharma Diaz, Bill, uh, intro 2204. I'm proud to co-sponsor it with her. I'm very proud of the work that she's done. I look forward to seeing how we can appropriately replicate this throughout the city. Uh, and, and I joined in co-sponsoring this as I did with the original version, Local Law 49 of 2019. I think this is an important step uh, towards creating affordable housing uh, in our city. Uh, with respect to uh, introduction 1116, um, my remarks uh, more fully extended earlier this morning in, uh, in the uh, um, committee. Uh, but, you know, I, I just want to quote uh, my colleague, Councilman Costantinides. Uh, his words were, the world has changed. And indeed it has. A hearing on this bill was held in April of 2019. We're a year and a half uh, or longer since then. And a lot has changed. And I think uh, before we ought to have passed this bill today, we probably could have done ourselves good and the people of New York good by having another hearing to really hear how, at least right now, uh, whether or not this is a good idea to pass. And for that reason, I'm going to vote no on that. Um, and with respect to the lien sale, as I said earlier, I do not feel comfortable looking my constituents in the eye when they have their lien sale troubles later this year after the administration turns it back on and saying that this is my fault that it's happening to you. I will not do that. Time. Um, I ask uh, uh, the pr Madam President for just a couple more seconds. Please. Um, I I won't do that. I, I don't believe it's right. I don't believe we ought to be doing it. And as I said before, if we did not do this today, if we did not take this vote, the lien sale would be dead as it is already right now. The city of New York does not have the authority for the last 28 days to do a lien sale. We are giving the city the authority to do this to our own communities, to our own constituents. I won't look my friends, my neighbors in the eye and tell them it's me who did it. I won't do it. Uh, and so Madam President, with that, I. Uh, and great respect to those members who worked on this topic. It's just not something I feel comfortable with. I will vote aye on all with the exception of introductions 1116 and introduction uh, 2166. Uh, and thank you very much for the additional time, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, Matteo. I'm voting no on 1116 and no on 2204 and I and the rest. Humbo. 
Thank you. I just wanted to close with uh, clarifying a few points that were said. Um, for me, when the voters voted on ranked choice voting, it came with an education plan promise. And we all know that in the midst of this pandemic, with such a delayed response to how the education plan would roll out, it is in fact an impossibility to educate New Yorkers at this time. It's not only impossible, it's also unsafe. And so that is where my passion for this comes from. In addition to that, it's also very difficult for me to be a part of a process that elected uh, uh, Letitia James as Attorney General, Jamani Williams as Public Advocate, Borough Presidents like Eric Adams and Ruben Diaz, the level of diversity that we've seen in New York City politics from the LGBTQ community to women to people of color. We have one of the most diverse political bodies, I would arguably say in the world. And this movement to unravel or to come up with a solution to a problem that does not exist is very difficult for me to participate in. I respect Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel. This is the right bill for 2019. And so I thank you for your advocacy, for your courage and for your strength to continue to push this forward because as this is railroaded throughout New York City, um, at a certain point, I suspect we may have to vote in a ranked choice voting system. So with that, I vote no on 1994. I vote aye on all of the rest. I, I applaud the courage of Council Member uh, Adams on her particular bill. I understand the challenges um, on both sides, but it takes a true leader and a true voice to come up with a solution, knowing that not all parties are going to agree or to come to the same conclusion. And I thank you for your tenacity and your courage. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, thank you to all the members. Uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm ready. You ready? Yes. All items in today's general order calendar have a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no, upset, no abstentions. The exception of the following bills, introduction 1116B has a vote of 34 in the affirmative, 13 in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2166B has 39 in the affirmative, 8 in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2204A has 42 in the affirmative, 4 in the negative, 1 abstention. And introduction 1994A has 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we'll now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members who wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Barron, Kalos, Prudenchik, Rodriguez, and Ku. All right, Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to call attention to the passing of Mr. Melvin Faulkner, a gentleman who is well known in our community, a father, a grandfather, a husband for 58 years, who is married to Carolyn Faulkner. He served in the Air Force, he was a veteran. And he was a deacon at Rehoboth Church. He's also served with the Black Vets for Social Justice. And when I was in the assembly, he was a staff member for me. And he is currently just uh, serving with Assembly Member Charles Barron in his office. And Mr. Faulkner was a gem. He was a gentleman. He was kind. He was intelligent. He was forceful. He was unafraid to speak what he thought to be the case. And he was effective in helping over 200 families 
avoid foreclosure on their homes. He worked with them, he represented them at hearings, and uh, he was very successful and he will be greatly missed. Secondly, I just want to talk about this week in January in 1972, Shirley Chisholm announced her candidacy for presidency. She was a Brooklynite. She grew up in a Garveyite family where they had conversations about white oppression, black radical consciousness and black pride. She moved on and moved from being a teacher to moving into the assembly where she was one of the architects of the SEEK program. She then moved to Congress where her platform addressed the issues of police brutality, prison reform, gun control, drug abuse and women's rights. Not much has changed in all these years. Shirley Chisholm challenged the local Democratic club restrictions on penalties that they, improve, that they impose on members who did not fall Damn. in line. Her slogan was unbought and unbossed. And she said that if you decide to operate on the basis of your conscience rather than your political advantage, you must be ready for the consequences and not complain when you suffer them. There is little place in the political scheme of things for an independent creative personality for a fighter. And anyone who takes that role must pay the price. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Kalos does not wish to speak. Uh, you can move to Council Member Grudenchek. Council Member Grudenchek. Time starts now. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Majority Leader. Let me uh, add my uh, words to those of uh, Councilman Deutsch. Uh, yesterday, I remembered uh, members of my family, uh, the Grudenchiks, the Boroshanskis, the Rosenfelds, and the Malamids, all murdered for the crime of being Jewish people in Eastern Europe under the reign of the tyrannical Nazi regime. So today and every day, actually, I remember them. Uh, I wanna speak about uh, vaccinations today, um, Madam Majority Leader, or actually what I wanna speak about is the lack of vaccinations um, in my district, in Paul Vallone's district, in Councilman Miller's district, in Adrian Adams' district, and in the district that was formerly represented by the new Queensborough President Donovan Richards. Eastern Queens is a vaccination desert. We knew this vaccine was coming. We knew that uh, the day would come and it did come when vaccines would be available. And um, the people of Eastern Queens pay their taxes. Um, they generally pay them on time. Um, and in many cases like that of my aunt, they have been living here for decades. In the case of my aunt Bevy, she's been living in Belrose since 1948 and still paying her property taxes. It is outrageous that the city of New York has made absolutely no accommodation uh, I read on Twitter that one of my constituents is being taken by her son from North Shore Towers to the Javits Center this Sunday. Do you know how far it is from North Shore Towers? North Shore Towers borders on Nassau County. It is almost criminal that she has to trek all the way across the city uh, in, her, in her 10th decade to get to the Javits Center. So today I am calling upon the mayor of the city of New York and all the people who work for him um, to find a way pick us up on the opportunities we have offered to them. Queensborough Community College is available. The Sam Field Center, which is part of the Common Point, um, Common Point um, Social Service Network Time. is available. Uh, just a few more words. Martin Van Buren High School is available in the High School for Teaching. And if those sites aren't good enough, I can find others. And I know my colleagues further south of me can also find sites so that the people of Eastern Queens don't have to schlep all over creation to get vaccinated for COVID-19. With that, I thank you, Madam Majority Leader, uh, for the time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We will now have, I believe, Council Member Rodriguez, followed by Council Member Ku. Time starts now. Can anyone help me to describe how should we call a scenario where during the COVID, most people who died and got a COVID in New York City, they were Latinos, Black, and Asians. And now with the 600 something thousand people that got the vaccine, that's a group that got the vaccine in less number. 
can we call it racism and discrimination? Or can we call it something that we didn't know how to plan and we will learn to do it better? My people are disappointed. My people are completely, you know, so concerned on what is the city that we're building. I want to hear from the city leader, from the state leader. I want for them to realize and recognize that as we are speaking right now, a developer in Midtown purchased 1,000 machine to provide it to the tenants who live in that building. And that the elected officials in those area, they know who is the developer. No one is talking about it. So I think that as people speak about our history and so mad and disappointed what happened, I'm mad and disappointed to see that Latinos, Black, and Asian have been left out on getting the vaccine. That's why I join my voice with our Brooklyn Board President, Eric Allen, Norman Siegel, asking for the city to disclosure the numbers of who got the vaccine so far in the city of New York. Nosotros tenemos que acabar con el racismo y la discriminación en la ciudad de Nueva York, donde los latinos, los negros, los asiáticos se murieron en mayores cantidades por el COVID y en este momento no se le están proveyendo la, vac la vacuna a esas personas. Eso es racismo y eso es discriminación y no se puede permitir. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Koo. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I want to congratulate Margaret and others and Jason for passing this vendor bill today. So I want to also use this opportunity to say that we need to be fair to our small business owners. I have a bill, intro 1145, that would exempt stores from item pricing requirements, provided they have scanners accessible to customers. During the pandemic, this will help reduce their already significant burdens. So I encourage all my colleagues to sign on to this bill. And that's all I want to say. For those who are not familiar with uh, item pricing, is when you go to supermarket, you had the you see these workers pricing all the items on the cans, on the jars, every one of them, they have a price. But if you have a scanner on the shelf, you don't need to spend like hours of time to do the, uh, to uh, tap all the price stickers on the, on the cans, on the jars. You know, I mean, we live in a modern, modern age now with scanners all over. So, uh, and the scanners are very cheap to attain now. So if a store has a couple of scanners, our customers want to know the price, they just go to the scanner and scan it and then save a lot of time and save a lot of stickers. It's good for the world um, in terms of we don't have to use so much papers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Ku. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, Council Member Miller. Time starts now. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, there's been uh, a lot of conversation and discussion uh, by the body this afternoon about the COVID vaccine and uh, its distribution. Uh, I wanna add my voice to that. And we've, we uh, met three weeks ago, members of the Black Latino and Asian Caucus and others uh, were at City Hall um, with a plan on a rollout. We wanted to ensure that the communities that had been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, those communities that have been ravaged by death and destruction, that they had not been left out of the vaccination process. Unfortunately, we were back again uh, this past Sunday at the Department of Health uh, with, with President Adams again with others uh, to, to show and demonstrate that over the past three weeks, and on the, on the rollout of the vaccine, um, those same communities had been left out. The fact that less than 5% of those who received vaccinations in the first two weeks were Black, Latino, or Asian. Less than 
one, th one third of all the folks who received the vaccine came from outside of the city of New York. In particular, the workers that make our lives so seamless and, and do the work that, that keep us safe each and every day, uh, many of these workers are uh, have to wait until March to be uh, vaccinated, while others who have the privilege of working from home uh, have gotten vaccinated. And so this is unfair. Uh, and, and we will be introducing a resolution uh, to that effect. The resolution uh, that has been sponsored by myself and, and executive uh, members of the caucus, along with uh, other members of the caucus and the borough president uh, uh, demands that, that, that these communities um. that were impacted by the pandemic be prioritized, that the communities of color, immigrants and other adverse communities and demographics equitably be included in the vaccine program, that eligibility criteria to be expanded to include underlying conditions of health, that the New York State Department of Health should create a more understandable uh, color-coded tiered system to define el eligibility levels. Vaccination sites should be open 24 seven. The state must develop a, a publicly accessible real-time vaccination dashboard dis discloses vaccination de data disaggregates by race, ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation, employment, and zip code. I ask my colleagues to join us in signing on to this. Look forward to doing this work and making sure that the city and the state has the continuity to ensure that the communities that were most impacted are served and have access to the vaccine. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. All right. With that being said, I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. And thank you all so much for the spirited and passionate uh, exchange on the floor today. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. The stated meeting of January 28th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Everyone be safe and healthy.